Good morning. Been a trying few weeks, hasn't it? But do you still feel like traveling on? I trust you had a, a good week in the Lord, or a good few weeks in the Lord, as we try to get back to normal, as we weather, weather the storm. It, you know, it seems like, you know, we stand up here before y'all, pretty much an open book, you can tell what God's dealing with us all. And uh, just the past couple of weeks, it seems like everything I've attempted to do has just been met with opposition. Yeah. And I'm forgetting about that sweet sucker that I'm chowing down on. Or that steak I've got in my mouth. Or waffles and sausage. Rung a bolt off my, or stripped a bolt out on the car. You know, just all kinds of stuff. And... Yeah, everybody else in the church had power but me. And I said, Lord, what in the world? He said, well, I know who can endure suffering and who can't. So, uh, I said, amen. I <laughs> yeah. And this morning we're going to talk about something that I'm sure none of us in this room deal with, but the subject of pride. You know. I'm sure it's not a problem, but the Lord has led me this way, so maybe we can safeguard against it. If you would, go to 2 Samuel chapter 24. We're in the last chapter of this journey here. 2 Samuel 24. This chapter is divided into basically three sections. We've got the census, the judgment, and then the altar. David here numbers the people. And he does it for no other purpose than pride. I, I was telling y'all about I'm fighting all this stuff, everything like everything I'd try to do, something would go wrong. You know, I'd have a perfect plan laid out of how I was going to do this, accomplish this, and it wouldn't work. And I and I got to thinking and praying, and the Lord said, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And I got to thinking back again to what I told y'all about Esau. What did God do to Esau? But what did he do to Jacob? He whooped up on him. And I know I need it. I tell you all the time, I pride myself in my humility. And that's, that's you know, all through these past two weeks when we've had the storms and the power outages and all the trials, I have never more vividly seen the fingerprints of God meeting my needs that I have this, these past two weeks. Not my wants. I mean, I had it all laid out how I was going to weather that storm. And he, he dynamited that. He went, Phew. See, my flesh does not want to rely on him. And David here... You know, there's that, the verse in the New Testament, soul take thy ease. Your barns are full, your silos are full, your 401k is maxed out. That's where I want to be. That, I'm, I'm honest with you. That's where I want to be. Keaton's like, not Brother Clay. Yeah, Brother Clay. I, my flesh does not want to need God. It wants to build its own kingdom here. I want to read y'all because there's a parallel here in 1 Chronicles 21 real quick to explain the first verse of chapter 24 of 2 Samuel here just to give you a little background. But in 1 Chronicles 21, it says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now in... 2 Samuel chapter 24 and verse 1, it says, And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. Now there's not a lot of explanation here about what God's anger was kindled with. But one thing I find fascinating in studying this is <clears throat> when there's not a clear explanation, what do we want to do? I'm going to speculate. I want to speculate. And that's dangerous. 
If, if God had wanted it more clearer, he'd have said it. But he just stated the fact here. He was, his anger was kindled against Israel, something Israel had done. And so he let the devil stand up against David and provoke David. To not, about like the situation with Job. Hast thou considered my servant Job? It's God's devil. But he let go chasing Job. All these things this week. Listen, I, I hate to say it this way, but it is what it is. I'm learning to rejoice in the chastening. But it's still grievous. I still don't like it. I still get mad. I still lose my cool over it. But I'm learning to thank God that His hand is there with restraining me so that I don't have that build up of pride. That I'm not like Esau. I could just sail through life right into hell. Esau have I hated. What did he do to him? That is, I, and I know y'all are probably tired of hearing that, but I want it to stick to you like it stuck to me so that I can see the love of God. My daddy, my earthly daddy, Wore my backside out. You know why? Because he loved me. If he'd have said, son, just go on. That ain't love. So is there pride? Do we have pride? Why, why was David doing this? Look at verse 2 here. For the king said to Joab and to the captain of the host which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord thy God add unto the people how many soever they be, an hundredfold, and thine eyes of my Lord the king may see it. But why doth my Lord the king delight in this thing? You think Joab's asking, Hey, whose idea was this? Where'd you come up with this? See, Paul told us, I think it's in 1 Corinthians 10, that if we're tempted, there's a way of it. God will make a way of escape here. And here it is. Who do you think, whose spirit do you think put that on Joab's lips? See, it's been said here before over and over, when we're faring well, we're not faring well. See, David's conquered everything. And now he's sitting there and his mind's beginning to wander. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. That's what my grandma used to say. Hey, go, go number the people. Let, let's see what I have done. Over the past couple of weeks, the Lord answered many prayers for me. Count my blessings. And I'm not going to go into the details of it because you know why? I'll, I'll, there's a tendency there to start glorifying my flesh. Look what I prayed up. And I'm scared of that. But I'll tell you this, I was talking to the Lord one morning and I got to laughing because I said, I know you hear me. Because it was like he had hid himself from me. I said, I know you, you're listening. And by the end of the day, he had answered that for me. That I may know the number of the people. Do we have that kind of pride in our heart this morning? Arthur Pink said this, The fuller be our cup of joy, the steadier the hand required to hold it. I'll read that to you one more time. The fuller be our cup of joy, the steadier the hand required to hold it. I'll close with, let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. I think I know where he got that from. If you'll read this. We're never told to joy in our, take joy in our prosperity. What are we told? Count it all joy when you want. Fall into diverse temptations and troubles and trials. Our dear brother laying on a hospital bed and, he, and just beaming with the things of God. I've told you all before, I've spoke loudly, more loudly to God with my tears than my tongue. Why? Because my pride is abased. There's nothing left. That's what God's done to me these past two weeks. He's just blowed clay out of the water. Whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth. Removing all that dross. My wife is waiting for the gold nugget now, ain't she? 
And I, we, I was doing something. We were doing some stuff one evening there, and it was just a mess. And she said, go get in the recliner, sit down, and don't move. That's how bad it got, or how good it got. I said, yes, ma'am. But here in verse 8, let's read what he says here. Remove far from me the vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Food of convenience. You know what happened to me during that storm? The Lord sent a raven by every day and gave me just what I needed at the brook. He didn't allow me to build a warehouse where I didn't need him. And I'd say, who is the Lord? And he didn't leave me poor and destitute either. He met my needs. Abased, no pride. So I don't, it's put enough fear in me, I don't want to number my people. I know we like to count people because people count. But we need to be careful. <laughs> I don't think we have that kind of problem here. But we could. We teach these children and ourselves pray for the Lord's blessings. But when the blessings come and the Lord gives us things, my daddy used to say, it's okay to have things, but don't let things have you. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I know this is all, all over the place this morning, or I feel like it is. But let's watch our pride. Listen, we can't touch that. Whenever, like I said, I don't want to go into details about all the prayers God answered because I'll corrupt it. I'll number it. I'll say, Joab, go number what no God did for me last week. Let me go tell them. No, I want to, I want to be thankful. I want to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And that is enough for me this morning. And I hope it is for you. May the Lord bless you in the coming week.